Star Wars Unlimited Shadows of the Galaxy, the launch day. We got a brand new box here, and we got my hits from my first box. What's going on, everybody? It's Ghost Robo, and this is my latest obsession. Star Wars Unlimited has honestly become one of the coolest things in my entire life. I've played in a ton of tournaments. I've made friends. I've uh, visited a ton of different stores. I've traveled around the area, and I freaking love this game. If you didn't know, the second set just released today. We're going to be unboxing a booster box together, see if we can get any showcase luck. But this is my first box. Normally, boxes have like three to four legendaries. This was a seven legendary box. We got the Hyperfoil Crate Dragon. We got a regular Poe, a Foil Poe, a Hyperspace Mandalorian, a Rule with Respect, a Ray, and a Final Showdown, along with kind of a nifty uh, Foil Previsla and a Maul, which, even though it's a rare, I found these Mauls to be harder to get than you might imagine and or expect but this game is freaking sweet uh i think it is one of the best games i've ever played bar none like i'm talking about in terms of video games card games board games it's fantastic um it is definitely my favorite card game of all time and i think right now given that i can't play this on a pc uh this is my game of the year which sounds crazy but it's just so dynamic i think the strategy is excellent i think it's more fast paced and more exciting than something like magic because it's action-based meaning you take an action i take an action okay i pay nine resources to play crate dragon then you pay seven resources to play maul but then oh my crate dragon allows me to deal damage equal to that card's cost their base or a ground unit and then you know we go back and forth so it's a little bit of it's almost like a duel right it's like a, a fencing match or something of that sort it's back and forth it's ebb and flow and it's really really nice and set two is fantastic um i did let's see i did six pre-release events so many pre-release events um i believe i went uh 9 11 13 15 and 2 at the pre-release events uh 15 wins two losses across all my matches i was a 3 and 0 champ at three in a row and i should have been uh, a 3 and 0 champ at four in a row and i could have been at a fifth in a row but i had to leave early this right now is my coolest card that i've got um, in any of my packs. This Hyperfoil Crate Dragon is sick, but let's pick up all these cards right now. Um, I've got them sleeved. Oh gosh, and I just threw, I threw a Poe on the floor? No, I threw Prey Vizsla. Okay, that's that's a little bit better. Don't want to throw Legendaries on the floor. Poe is pretty good. Um, I'm loving Ray this set. That is currently my favorite leader. I'd love to get a Ray showcase. Um, I got a Mandalorian showcase in a pre-release kit, which was freaking sick. We're going to open these packs. 16 cards a pack. I'll give you guys some of my thoughts and tips along the way. Pre-release has been incredibly exciting and incredibly fun. Um, I think it's such a great format with Sealed because you get six packs and you try to figure out what kind of deck you're going to build. You know exactly how it's going to go and uh, exactly how it is going to be with just the cards that you're dealt. That's all you get. That's all you get, and you don't throw a fit, and you're good to go. You roll with that. You get six leaders in six packs, six sets of cards. And I found that, man, I was just rolling with the best cards I had. I ended up playing with a ton of different leaders, um, five different leaders at my six different pre-releases. Did not play Boba Fett. I played Cad Bane. I played Bosk twice. I played Ray. I played Mando. I played Moff. Um, it was a ton of fun. Ray was probably my favorite, but any leader that I ran that had the blue package uh, ended up being pretty darn sweet because blue, this set, in sealed at least, in limited formats, uh, just runs the table. Blue gives you access to Fell the Dragon and Rivals Fall, which are two extra strong removal cards in a set that doesn't have a ton of removal. Um, a lot of removal in set one, Spark of Rebellion, so, you know, maybe these cards wouldn't have been all that much jazz in the first set, but in the second set sealed, they're so valuable, um, and I also loved running Red. I loved running Hunting Nexu a lot. I loved running uh, the Clan Challengers a lot. A very fun set of cards here. Let's see. Punishing One, not too bad. There's Rule with Respect, a Legendary, and a Hyperfoil Haxian Brood. Also liked him a lot. Uh, in my last Bosk deck, he was very strong, and I ran him in a Moff Gideon deck um, where I just loaded up on Bounty Hunters and it was pretty sweet. Rule of Respect is a nice legendary here. Friendly unit captures each enemy non-leader unit that attack your base this phase. Never actually used this card in practice, um, but it does seem like something that could find a fit in a deck. I think one thing that's interesting is that many of these cards are going to quickly fall by the wayside after the pre-releases. So a lot of strong cards in the first set, and while many of these cards are better and or good replacements, um, I think there's a case to be made for a lot of the set one stuff sticking around, specifically Boba Fett as a leader. Um, if you want to know a little bit about my, uh, oh, that's a sweet looking card, Midnight Repairs there, Quill and 
Mando hanging out, um, given your anger and Migs double rare pack, two nice rares. I don't think Migs should be a rare, frankly. I think he should probably be a common. Uh, but no, no disrespect to uh, Mr. Bill there. Um, I also really like Trans Ocean Hunters, but Disabling Fang Fighter also very valuable with the uh, the upgrade discard. But in Premier um, with set one, I ran a Tarkin Blue deck that I had good success with. Um, that's what I took to two showcases. I placed top four. Um, and then I ran a, that's the Rivals Fall card I was talking about, Defeat a Unit. Just so good. This is like the first removal card that can target a leader, and I would just always save this for the flip turn. Boom, they deploy Ray, or they deploy whoever, they're gone. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the Sabine deck I ran was pretty good. Zori Bliss is actually kind of under, uh, undervalued. She's a strong card, especially with Smuggle being only six instead of her regular five cost. Jabba's Rancor won me some games as well. Um, I ran him in my Moff Gideon deck, and I was surprised that Gideon was as strong as he was. Um, I didn't know that he would be really any any good, and Gideon ended up being quite amazing. Uh, so I'm excited to see what I can run in set two. Um, I would love to make a good Ray deck. I also think Tarkin has room to grow, and I did kind of grow very fond of Tarkin over my time with the game. Uh, we got a Maz and a Sonora San. Pop Maz out there. I think Maz is a solid unit. But the best part of this has all been just experiencing new cards for the first time in four months. Playing and practicing and testing with all new cards and seeing what kind of crazy combos you can make. Um, I love the limited formats. I think Sealed and Draft are so cool. Draft where you get three packs, pick a card, pass it, pick a card, pass it, and make a deck that way. There's something just about those style of... Uh, style of game that just really really appeals to me it feels very video game-esque right like important choices eventual strategy in your matches and just the the like allure of like oh my gosh you could pull something amazing you could get something fantastic you could get a showcase card if you don't know showcase cards are the leaders that are like a full crazy foil like here this is krennic here um from the first set but it's like a full card foil it's different art it's uh, unique. It doesn't just look like this. You would you would know it when you see it. I would scream if I if I got one here. Um, another Migs Mayfield man back to back or not back to back, but close to back to back Migs. I think Fennec Shan is incredibly strong. I'm gonna highlight some of the cards that I love in this set. Fennec Shan won me games. Um, I ended up running a Mando deck with two Fennex, and that was just brutal. They'd remove one Fennec and they'd bring the second back. Fennec basically is a mini Han Solo from the first set, allowing you to deal damage on attack equal to the number of different costs in your discard pile before you even apply for normal stat line. So it's just a great way to uh, get a bunch of damage out there and remove cards without actually hurting yourself in any way. Fennec can withstand. Now, she only has six health, so she does go down pretty quickly. But like I said, I had back-to-back Fennec, uh, and that made it incredibly tough for my opponents in that pre-release to do well. On someone who I want to experiment with, but I have not yet. I didn't feel comfortable playing Han um, in any of the pre-releases. I don't think I had like the, the lineup that I would have wanted, and I felt better about Ray as my leader. I think the Outpost Constables are freaking great. A 2-6 for 4 as a beefy, beefy Sentinel um, that is kind of a brat to deal with. Timely Intervention as well, allowing you to basically ECL anything for 1. Uh, play it from your hand, give it Ambush. Makes it very, very strong. That's a nice card. Covetous Rivals there. Um, I didn't really do much with the Bounties. I found that the smuggle mechanic ended up being my favorite. Here's Kylo's tie. That is a legendary. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, not the best card, but it could be good in Kylo decks. I didn't play Kylo or Han. I didn't really go with any of the red leaders. Um, but I did find more success, uh, like I was saying, with smuggle. I had a round where I got to play Tech alongside Mando. And Tech is a really, really awesome card. Oh, shit. Sorry for my language. Bang! Bang! Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bang! Now I have two. What do I do? What do I do now that I have two? Holy crap! That is a showcase hit, baby. Off the box, straight from Asmodee themselves. Look at this card. Look at that foil, look at that, and Mando comes in strong. If this set is not trying to tell me to build a Mando deck, I don't know what is. I've been talking about freaking Ray and my interest in building something maybe with Kylo or uh, Han Solo, but Mando, 
double trouble these are freaking crazy showcase cards are supposed to be one every 12 boxes we're rocking two one from a pre-release one from a box Ooh, the only thing cooler than this in my opinion is the ray showcase i think that's the best showcase in the set but how can i complain that is remarkable i'm gonna have to trade slash sell one of these asap because i definitely don't need two maybe both of them how the heck does that work out? Yes, that's a beautiful hit. Let's see what else we got. The rest of the uh, the cards aren't going to be all that exciting, but I'm going to stick to my plan of telling you what we got going on. I like the rickety quad jumper at the beginning. It allows you to flip and potentially get an XP, but I found it to be too rickety. It's a card I ended up veering away from as I moved through my pre-releases, and I had more and more success as I went, as I zeroed in on the cards that I really liked, and I zeroed in on the synergies and packages. I, I honestly didn't use hardly any bounties. And I want that to be of note to you because bounties are probably the most notable addition to the game, but I didn't find them to be mandatory in any way. In fact, I ran decks and won the entire store pre-release without hardly any bounties or with one, maybe two bounties and sometimes not even using them. Yes, when I ran Bosk, I played Rich Reward and got that once or twice, but I preferred having someone like Tech. Tech is so good because Tech allows every card to be smuggled. And smuggled means it goes from your resource row and you can play it. And that is so valuable, especially in limited formats, um, because it gives you access to all of the cards. The cards have extreme value because now every card can be played and every card is a threat. Your deck runs low, your hand runs low, they make you discard, anything bad like that happens and you are still A-OK. -okay. So tech is super strong, a card that I didn't think looked that great on the previews, but it ended up being great. Outlaw Corona, is one that I did not like, but learned to appreciate because the bounty is bad. Put the top deck of your card, or put the top card of your deck into play as a resource. Sounds terrible, and the opponent gets that when they kill it. But a three five in space is difficult, especially in sealed or limited. If you're ever playing draft or anything, space is hard to come by. So unless someone makes a significantly uh, significant investment in space, Outlaw Corona is going to be okay. Anything with a three five stat line for three is just very strong. Remember, that's the stat line of the Boba Fett unit in the first set that was widely regarded as the best. Like three cost unit in the entire game and maybe one of the best units overall in the entire game but now we got liberated slaves coming in we got toro calican coming in um and we have multiple cards that are going to come in and fit in that really really nice slot there that take a some of the heat off boba and allow for other cards to shine and b provide you with great options um to really tempo out and make sure that you're staying in line with the curve and with what you need to do. Um, didn't like the Gamorrean Retainer as much as I thought. A 3-2 with Sentinel if you have another green unit. Two, dies too easy. Relentless Pursuit is a great card. This one really came through clutch um, with Bosk and Cad. It allows a friendly unit to capture a non-leader that costs the same or less, but if you're a bounty hunter, you get a shield, and that was so great. Capture plus the shield makes the card very difficult to destroy uh, and ends up being very, very nice. I, I, I didn't use a ton of attachments. Um, I pulled a Dark Saber in one pre-release, and I rolled Dark Saber, and people just targeted it immediately. They'd save their rivals' fall, they'd take it out. I felt like it made me more vulnerable, but I still was able to do significant damage. Ooh, that's sweet. The Wookiees are back. Uh, and so there were times where it was still valuable, but it didn't strike me as as incredible as I thought. Um, that's another double rare pack, Hyperspace, Altering, Pershing, pretty cool there. Uh, I do think Ketsu Anyo is a solid card, allowing you to defeat upgrades that cost two or less. That includes shields. Uh, that includes uh, XP tokens. So we are moving through this box. I think we're about halfway done. So far, we've got two legendary hits. Um, I'm hoping that we can get another, but the, the, the double Mando showcases from this weekend are just crazy, and uh, I cannot, you know... I can't complain. No matter what else is in this box, I cannot complain. Uh, there's Rich Reward, Hyperfoil Rich Reward. Like I said, nice card. You get that to proc even once with Bosk, who allows, as a leader, when he flips, here he is. Um, he allows you to claim a bounty twice. That gets you 4 XP off Rich Reward. Super, super valuable. Um, Craig and Gore, I just took down immediately. I feel like there's some cards that are so strong, they get targeted immediately, and they end up being weaker. Does that make any sense? Does that sound dumb? I'm not... I'm not so sure, but like Craig and Gore is one that anytime I saw him on the battlefield, I was like, boom, I got to take him out. Now, I do think there's some leaders in here that really stink, um, but Ray with Moisture Farmer is very good. I've seen people downplay Moisture Farmer, but I think Moisture Farmer is actually sick and solid and a very strong card. Uh, one that, you know, I do really, really like. Now, the Arquitans Assault Cruiser is okay. 
Um, but the Moisture Farmer, you give it the plus one, it's a one five, you give it another plus one, it's a two six with Restore two, and it just becomes a pain in the butt to deal with. Nobody wants to take that out. Nobody wants to waste units or turns trying to deal with a six health. So you end up just letting the Moisture Farmer stick around, and then you feel really bad about it because it's just restoring two every time. And Ray, like, I have to deal so much damage against Ray. Sometimes you'll deal like 40, 50 damage against Ray, and you're like, dude, what the heck is going on? Because I thought I killed you. 30 health on the bases in set two, and then you end up having to deal 40, 50 health because Ray is just restoring three off the leader, and then the Moisture Farmers are restoring two. Quill is restoring. Everybody is able to restore. I also really like this card. Covert Strength is nice. Heal two damage from a unit, give an experience token to it. For one, that's ridiculous. Even just one for an experience token is pretty nice. But smuggling this later in the game ends up being very valuable. Back-to-back -back Merc Companies, still think this is one of the best cards. I had a lot of lot of success with the Mercenary Company because of the Ambush and the Overwhelm. It's very valuable uh, in these matches. Stolen Land Speeder comes in as our rare. I think it's more of a, you know... A small unit. There's a lot of one and two cost units that end up being rares in this set, which I do appreciate. I think it adds to variety. Um, but I haven't found really many of them that great. Someone else that's over or underrated is Tobias Beckett. Um, oh, but this is this is probably my favorite card of the set thus far. Choose a friendly non-leader unit and an enemy non-leader unit. Exchange control of those units. So valuable. So valuable, especially in limited, when you can say like, oh, you know. I've got a reputable hunter out, and you've got a Prey Vizsla or a Crate Dragon. Let's trade. Give me your Crate Dragon, your 10-10 Overwhelm for my 3-4, and the whole game flips. The whole game flips. Um, I had a very tight match where someone had two of these, and I still ended up tying them. Um, they kind of took me, slow played me to time, so we didn't get to get our third game and ended up going to a dice roll, which was a bummer, but two choose sides backs to back was a brutal hole to climb out of. Um, but I really love that card. I think it's so fun to get to make trades like that. Very cool. Wrecker, another very good card for uh, a red heroic deck. I do want to try out Poe, Han, Wrecker, Cray Dragon, uh, Wild Rancor, kind of that set up there. Let's see. How many packs did dump this box here? I think we still got... I'm sorry for that noise. Still got five packs left. Let's see if we can pull another Legendary. So far, we're at two, right? Kyler's tie and... Um, Whatever that one is called. One of the first cards we got down here. Rule of Respect. I'm not the biggest fan of event legendaries. I would much rather pull a unit legendary if it was up to me. Carl's little turncoat with the hyperspace there. There's Fell the Dragon. Defeat a leader unit, a non leader unit with five or more power for four. Ends up being quite valuable. Oh, there is a sick foil, Kylo Ren. General Riken is actually decent, allowing you to give Sentinel to something and a 5 7 body for six, but. Sorry, General Riken, 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 uh, you are falling victim to the mass attack of Kylo Ren. That's a foil Kylo, my second Kylo, trying to build out play sets of all these cards. Oh, and I am going to, please, come on. Yes, that's very nice. That is a very nice card. I like that a lot. That's, there's my two big hits, you know, the Mando Showcase and Kylo. Freaking great, and I uh, can't believe we opened the showcase on camera. I saved the right box, huh? I saved the right box, and getting a showcase is just so freaking awesome and so luckily Survivor's Gauntlet. So the reason we got Kylo, by the way, in case you're curious, is because there is a rare slot and then there's a foil slot. And we got General Recon in the rare slot, but then the foil slot can be anything. It's usually a common, maybe sometimes an uncommon, occasionally a rare, but a legendary can also be there. And that's how we popped a Kylo, even though, uh, you know, we already had used up our rare slot in that pack with General Riken. So it's pretty cool that you can get double rare packs. You can't end up with triple rare packs. Um, and there's a Ray, sick. I got a Ray play set now, and I got another Kylo. That is very good. So we're at four legendaries for the box, which is about standard. The first box I showed you where I had seven was crazy. Um, boxes I've seen go down to three, which is kind of sucky. Um, oh, there's something cool in the back here. It's a Lurking Tie Phantom Hyperfoil. This card is really good. Kira, nah, I don't really love the unit, Kira. Um, I think the... I mean, it's okay. It's kind of like a general... Uh, it's kind of like a governor, regional governor, but on a four cost... But they can, just, they can still play it, it just costs three more. But Lurking Typhanum is very impressive because it cannot be taken out by captures uh, or card abilities. So 
you know, Darth Vader's ping cannot impact it. If you get power to the dark side, you can choose Lurking Tie Phantom and then not defeat it because the choice comes before the defeat and Lurking Tie Phantom cannot be defeated. So that's pretty sick. We're down to our final pack here. This has been a pretty successful uh, set thus far. Kylo's tie is not great, but in a Kylo deck, it could be pretty powerful. Um, and then Ruler of the Spect being another legendary. That's good. Four legendaries. Um, three were in the regular slot here. One, two, three, we're in the normal slot. Kylo is kind of an extra, so there's a chance that there's a fourth legendary in here. Um, a lot of boxes have four legendaries instead of you know, another number, so there's a chance that we get another legendary here. Because Kylo was in a different slot, I kind of regard this as a three legendary pack um, because Kylo was in that slot, and we don't get it. So Kylo is going to end up, this is a three legendary box with Kylo in the fourth slot, so it's okay. It's still a four legendary set, uh, four legendary box, but the showcase just kind of makes up for all of it and you just really you really can't say much else except you got a freaking showcase i don't think we had any repeating rares either let's check did anything repeat um choose sides land speeder i think everything is a different rare this whole pack which is no double maws and double megs okay um we got some extra rares here we ended up with one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven so effectively 27 rare or better cards in 24 packs. So that's pretty good. Um, at least three of them were double rare packs, which is very, very nice and a really successful box. I love this game. Maybe I'll make some deck tip videos or show you guys what kind of deck I am running. But again, cannot believe we pulled another showcase Mandalorian on camera. The hollow foil Kylo is awesome. Another Ray, a silencer, and some sick hyperfoils here. Star Wars Unlimited is beautiful. If you haven't given it a try, even if you're not a fan of card games, I highly recommend it. This has blown me away and honestly changed my life for the better, as silly as that sounds. It's got me out of the house. It's got me making friends. It's got me meeting people. And it allows me to do something competitive now that I'm in my 30s and, you know, sports aren't really as much of an option these days. But, yeah, look at that. That is sick. And I don't know how I have two of them, but... Very lucky, very cool, very awesome. Star Wars Unlimited, go grab some packs. Only available at like local game stores, not available at like Target, Walmart, any of that stuff. Um, they're trying to really foster the community. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your favorite card you saw today. And until next time, drink some hot chocolate. And we'll see you all later.